everybody. Welcome to our very first episode of Hall of Flame. Today we're here with Delino DeShields, uh, former Texas Rangers and now plays for the Cleveland Indians. Four, three, two, one. Three. Crazy mother. Also nicknamed Sonic because he has insane speed. But today we'll see if he can go through this challenge quickly. Welcome, Delino. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. So, how are you with spicy foods, though, in general? I mean, I, I remember when I was younger, I was obsessed with, like, ramen noodles, top ramen. <laughs> You're talking to and, the right people. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> and, you know, that was, like, the only thing that I could make that my mom would allow me to make because it was easy. You just boil a pot of water, put the thing in, and you got it. So, um, I would, my mom used to make fun of me because she used to say, what are you eating, spaghetti? Cause I would put like so much hot sauce on it, <laughs> like in my noodles, and you know. So, I don't. From that standpoint, I guess like I got a pretty high tolerance. Okay. But, All right. You know. We'll I think see. you'll get through this pretty quickly, then, pretty easily. Then I think. Let's see. I don't know. We'll see. I guess. Just in case, there's milk over there. There's different kinds. There's chocolate, strawberry, regular. You got you got bread. Mm -hmm. Go um, Gogurt. <laughs> Just in case, and plenty of water. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this. All right. We're gonna start with oh, our God. signature sauce, which is our Creo sauce made from coconut milk. It's more on the mild end, so it shouldn't be too hard. Mm. A little sweet and savory. What do you think of the sauce in general? That's really good. Mm -hmm. It's really flavorful. That's it's what we're different. Going for. Yeah. Yeah, it's a blend between Asian Cajun. Now, Danny and I have spent a lot of time in New Orleans for many reasons, mm -hmm. but um, when's the last time you were there? In New Orleans? Um, I think I, I went there, I went there last year, I can't remember exactly when it was, but um, I think it might have been like a playoff game that the Saints were playing, because oh. um, Alvin Kamara, we went to high school together, he oh, brought wow. back for the Saints. And um, I was actually going to go to the game, but I had to be back home afterwards when I drove. And, you know, when you go to New Orleans, they have just that small little, like, road. Mm -hmm. right, right and then I was water. thinking, like, okay, if I stay for this game and I have to leave, it's going to take me a whole day to get back home. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to watch the game. And I just left early. But <laughs> I was going to LSU, too. Um, it's in Baton Rouge, but... You know, one of the things that I loved about Baton Rouge and Louisiana in general was the Cajun food. So that was kind of like the sell point for me yeah, for to, sure. to commit there. So Very cool. Everything. Traveled all over, obviously playing for the Rangers. Yeah. What's one of your favorite cities to travel to and why? Um, jeez. I really like Boston. Um, not for like a food reason, but, right. you know, there's just a lot of history there um, at Fenway Park. The fans are, you know, they're always into the game. They sell out every day. It's a really big tourist spot. It's just a, like a neat little city. Yeah. Um, I, it it kind of reminds me more of a town than a city. Sure. Um, like you're going through, you see all these like little restaurants and bars around the stadium, and then there's like this old stadium right there. <laughs> and you just feel like, you know, so many great players have, have mm -hmm. played on that field. And I don't know, it's just a really cool thing, especially when you go behind the Green Monster, you see all the signatures, and um, it's pretty nostalgic, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome city. Yeah. You ready for the next one? next one? Yep, let's do it. So is this the right. sriracha? Yeah, we'll go left. We're gonna go, yeah. This is going to be the sriracha. Yes. Which one? Uh, that one, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So recently you hosted a clinic and bought baseball equipment for all the kids that day. Mm -hmm. Your father is really active with Urban and Youth Academies. Um, and like the Jerry Manuel Foundation, has helping underprivileged children been emphasized in your family? And how important is it to you to give back to the community, specifically children? Um, it's just it's just one of those things where, like, we have this platform as professional athletes to to, to be able to give back and stuff. And you know, I I didn't want to look twenty years down the road and wish that I could have done things differently mm -hmm. or utilize my platform more. And, um, like, especially in the African-American community, for me, there's not a lot of African-Americans that play baseball. Um, 
at the big league level. And a lot of it is just they don't see guys like me around to even be inspired to, you know, play baseball. They see LeBron James and uh, football players and, you know, obviously plenty of basketball players, but there's not really a lot of baseball players that, black baseball players that really put themselves in the community. And there are some that are older, but, you know, as far as, like, the younger generation, um, you just don't really see it that often. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I kind of made it a point to, to just really get in the community, not just with African-American kids, but just mm -hmm. kids in general. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have a lot of knowledge to, to give, True. and um, you never know, it can really inspire somebody. And, you know, if I can impact a couple kids, then I feel like I do my job, so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. How was that last trim for you? Not too bad? Yeah. I mean, it had some kick, but it didn't, it didn't last, like, that right, long. Right, right. That's Sriracha. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you came from a family of athletes. Your father played in the major leagues. Your sister plays for the WNBA. Obviously, you play major leagues as well. Was being an athlete emphasize and important in your family or just so happened to be something that you guys just happened to be good at and just love to do it? Yeah, no, it wasn't emphasized. Um, obviously, I looked up to my dad growing up, so, you know, just being around the clubhouse and being around, um, you know, watching him play um, just inspired me to do that. I'm sure if I was around other things, like, I don't know, a band, for instance, sure. like, I'd probably would be in a band, I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's just really like what you surround yourself with, you just kind of gravitate towards that. And my mom ran track and field, my dad played in the biggies for a long time. So um, I, I'm definitely genetically gifted as far as that goes. Like I can go on a football field and play football. Sure. Probably play basketball or, you know, lacrosse even. Right. You know, it might take some time to just know the fundamentals, but right. I could probably do it. Um, so the transition to baseball was, was easy, but it wasn't, it wasn't like an emphasis, like my parents didn't force us to do, to play sports. Right. You know, it was always one of those things where they wanted us to find our own path. And, um, you know, my sister and I, we always, well, we made it a point to try to separate ourselves from our dad because everywhere we went, it was like, oh, this is the line of the shit, this kid. Right. You know, especially mm -hmm. with me playing baseball and mm -hmm. having the same name. Obviously, I, I like respect my dad and I love my dad, but I wanted to just kind of be different than him. Sure. In, in many ways because mm -hmm. of the comparisons and stuff. So, I mean, at a young age, my sister and I, we used to sit and talk and talk about the future and, you know, the things that we wanted to to do and how we wanted to be different, how we were going to separate ourselves. And um, I think having a sister that had the same mindset that I had, uh, she's two years younger than me, it, it, it definitely helped us push each other and get us to where to where we are. But um, yeah, it was just our destiny, I guess, That's to, awesome. to play sports. Who's the, better, who's the best athlete in the family? <laughs> I get asked this a lot. Um, I'd probably say Diamond. I mean, she she played tennis, softball. I mean, she played baseball with me. Um, she ran track and field. She did, like, everything. So, um, I mean, she wanted to play volleyball. She probably could do that, too. Mm -hmm. um, so Diamond's the MVP. Yeah, right? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I played two sports. You know, I played basketball, but I didn't really like it, yeah. you know. Um, my dad was going to Villanova to, to play college basketball and then got drafted. Um, so obviously you didn't do that. But um, yeah, basketball wasn't my thing. I just stuck to football and baseball and, you know, Diamond, she just did everything. So that's awesome. <laughs> I just say, you know, you know, just because you did everything, you're the better athlete. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only reason. Yeah, right. That's the only reason. You wanna try the next one? Yeah. So the next one is going to be more of a barbecue sauce flavor. It's the Moonshine Madness. This guy. A little more of a kick. Yeah, he gets turned up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you spent some time with Darrow recently. You guys did a song together and it was your walk-up song. 
What was that experience like? Darrell and I linked up for the first time. We had the little Sonic theme kind of going on with my blue hair and everything, and everybody loves him in the DFW area. He's very good in the community. There were some ideas that, that I had pitched to him. I told him I didn't want it to be all about me, obviously. <laughs> That's kind of... You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't want that, but just to have like little little snippets of baseball and you know incorporate me little by little. PSA, whoever trying to play, better level up because it just got. How many how many seconds y'all get like on a walk up? And anywhere between like ten and fifteen. It could even be a deal where you take like, part of the song and yeah. it'd be like for like my first at bat and then another part of the song for like a different at bat. Okay, you know yeah. Saying? They say, I walk up and they know the drill. I make plays and they give me deals. You play house and I play the field. Send a field just like the Shields. You play house and I play the field. Send a field just like the Shields. Delano, 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 Delano. And do you see a future in music? Oh. Well, honestly, do I see a future in music? No. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not. I love listening to music. I love all kinds of music. I listen to country music. Uh, old school R&B, old school hip hop. Um, you know, if y'all ever like come to my game, you hear like old school music all the time. It's it's, it's one of those things that kind of lasts, um, you know, generation to generation. Um, but the experience with Darrell was really cool. Um, you know, I, it was, this was something that I wanted to do that you don't see a lot in baseball. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And you know, I wanted to to document it and you know, give people like kind of a behind the scenes look of how everything kind of came into place up until the moment of me walking up with it for the very first time and him throwing out the first pitch and just trying to like create a story behind it. And, um, you know, Darrell, he was really cool. He's very talented. Um, you know, he was talking about stuff that I would never even thought about, you know. Um, like what? Just like the business side. Oh, um, okay. You know about how he he'll put out certain um, you know tracks for certain crowds like his <laughs> fans. Um, you know I I really don't even know how to explain it, but the way that he was talking about how he puts out his music and the build up it takes for like an album or anything like that was just I I if it was me I would just throw my album out there. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? But it's all strategy. Sure. Um, and you know, reaching out to different groups of people because there are different groups of people, and mm -hmm. then you have the the guys like I don't know Justin Bieber, I, I guess, where he can put out a song and kind of everybody can gravitate towards that. Sure. But you know, that's Justin Bieber. Not right. everybody can be, you know, somebody like that. So uh, just hearing like his side of things and being in the studio with him and um, you know seeing him do his thing is was pretty cool and. Um, you know, one of the things that I told him, I said, I don't want this song to be about me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, he did a good job of not making it about me, but in, and including, like, you know, parts of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, you know, football stuff, because you, you just don't know where, you know, this song could end up. Sure. So, like in a movie. Like yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> and initially, that's, that was the thought. Like, hmm, this would be cool, you know, if... I don't know. Paramount Studios saw this. And was like, oh, this is this would be a good like theme song for the movie. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah. But you know, we got a private screening out of that. Yeah, the screening um, was fun. Yeah, was which was which was pretty cool. That's awesome. That yeah, very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> so obviously, speaking of Sonic, that's how you got the nickname for your speed. Uh, and uh, you had three seasons where you were top six in stolen bases in the MLBs. Um, does a lot of that come before the game? Do you guys plan that, or is it based impromptu, just the way the pitcher's throwing it? Do you, how do you make that decision of when you're going to steal the base? I mean, for me, so when I was younger, I like never got thrown out, you know, ever. Like I just run safe every time. <laughs> and then my first year in the big leagues, I tried to take, not in the big leagues, I'm sorry, in the minor leagues, I tried to take that same mentality and... I got thrown out a couple of times. I was like, this is really weird. Like, I should not be getting thrown out like this. <laughs> um, just because I, I had success in the past. And I had a conversation with my dad and he was he was like, you gotta be a student of the game. And I never really heard 
being a student of the game because when you're when you're younger, you just play. You know, you get scouted, you just play, and you know they see you, you know your tools and everything, and that that's how you get drafted. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how they do it now, but back then that's what it was. Um, we didn't talk about the mental game of baseball or nothing like that. They just saw this is the body, this is the potential, we want you, whatever. So, you know, I was fortunate enough to have somebody there that I could talk to and kind of walk me through things. And um, so when we were talking about being a steward of the game, back, you know, in the minor leagues, you don't have technology. You don't have video, all this video and mm -hmm. stuff that we have now. So it, <clears throat> I, like, made it a point to you know, watch everything, you know, write it down um, in, in a notebook so that I can remember. And just that kind of preparation helped me. So if I saw a guy and, you know, he was just giving me bases or, you know, he had a really quick pickoff or something, write it down. And next time we played him, I'm like, okay, I, I got this guy. And right. then when I got out there, it was just like a no brainer type mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and even sometimes during the game, you can pick up on little things if you're paying attention. Um, but a lot of guys, they just kind of sit back and kind of depend on other people's information. And, um, and when I got to the big leagues, with all the video and stuff, it, it was a lot easier because you could prepare like way before the game, right. um, you know, based off of who was starting. You know, the guys in their bullpen, uh, you can sit there and watch and, you know, pick out the different cues that you see that way to when you got on base, it was just like, I can go on, on the first pitch if I wanted to. I don't have to wait two or three pitches. Um, but yeah, it became like an art to me. Um, and you know, I take a lot of pride in my base running and I don't run selfishly like I used to back in the day. <laughs> you know, it's more so, you know, if I'm still in the base, I'm, you know, the game has to be on the line. Um, and if I feel really good and confident about it, I'm in scoring position and, you know, I can help, you know, guys get RBIs and help the team win. So, but, you know, with my legs, a lot of times I'm in scoring position at first base. And my first year in the big leagues, my manager pretty much told me that. He's like, you don't have to run every time. Like, <laughs> people already think, people are already paranoid that you're going to get on base every run. <laughs> so, he was like, you can, like, really just be out there and just mess with them. And they're going to make mistakes. And... Um, Chu that year had like a crazy second half mm -hmm. and I like barely even ran hmm. you know I remember in one month I was, I was like 10 for 10 in stolen bases like I did sorry <clears throat> um, <laughs> but I was 10 for 10 in stolen base um, attempts like 100% successful and like I could have probably kept going mm -hmm. and you know maybe had 50 bags that year but you know, the way he was swinging the bat, and that's also knowing your teammates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the way he was swinging, I was like, dang, I don't have to run. Yeah. He's in the gap, I'm scoring easily because, you know, not not a lot of guys can score from first base on a double. Right. So um, then it started becoming more like, you know, ninth in the eighth, ninth inning. If, I need, if they need me to get on second base, I can do that because I prepared for it. So... Yeah, you're amazing base uh, stealer. So was uh, your former teammate, uh, was Andrews. <laughs> you guys are going back and forth in terms of who had the most steals out of the team. Was there a lot of trash talking at all between uh... Yeah, he... <laughs> <laughs> he always talking. That's <laughs> yeah. um, him. And I tell him all the time, too. I said, man, if I was out there every single day, uh, it wouldn't even be close. <laughs> like, you know, Elvis, he, he plays every day, so... Yeah. And it's always like neck to neck. He's like, man, I got more bags than you. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? <laughs> you played 150 games, and I have like 111 under my belt or whatever it is. That's but um, yeah, he he's a he's a competitor. Um, it makes it fun. Sure. Um, I think it really helped, especially like now he's getting older. I really feel like. I mean, oh, <laughs> he, is, oh. he is. I, I mean, he knows. But. Um, He'll tell you, like, I guess, like, a lot of days he doesn't feel good necessarily. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when I was in Texas, and that, that that's not just from me, but, you know, even, like, Danny Santana or Rugi, like, we would all push each other um, to be really good on the bases. And 
I think the trash talk is awesome because, <laughs> you know, guys get out there and they want to get that bag or they want to go first or third on a, on a base hit or, you know, and I think for the past three years we were like lead the league in base running metrics. And um, I think we just really feed off each other when it, when it comes off of that. But somebody definitely has to set the tone, and I like to say that, that <laughs> I set this tone all the time. But, you know, that's just me. But, um, yeah, Elvis, we we were always uh, talking trash to each other. And he got me this year, but <laughs> I was like, he got There's lucky. There's always Not by much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Want to try the next one? Yeah. Let's do it. And this one is the Trinidad uh, Scorpion. Scorpion, that sounds yeah. dangerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> got my nose running. I know, right? Need some more napkins? No, I'm good. All right. So, you've got long sleeves on today, so we can't really see your tattoos. But I know you have several of them depicting African American players um, in the major leagues. So, out of all your tattoos, which one is your favorite? I have a mural on my back of Psalm 23. Um, that was a Bible verse that I, that I grew up um, with my grandma, my mom, you know, they just kind of just instilled that verse into me. And so I thought it was a pretty cool idea to just get a, get a mural of the valley of the shadow of death on, on my back. That's awesome. Um, and then I did my leg last year and I just wanted to pay tribute to, you know, the guys who paved the way for me in the past. Um, you know, everybody, you know, when they think African American players that paved the way, they think of Jackie Robinson. Sure. Obviously, like he broke the barrier for African American players to come, but there was a lot of great players before that. Um, so I kind of made it like a Negro League thing, and a lot of people they don't they don't even know that there was a Negro League. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but my dad, um, I mean, when I was little, my room was covered with like Negro League stuff. So. I mean, I was just surrounded by it, and those were guys that I looked up to. I would, you know, create players on the video game back in the day, and I'd be like these old, like, like Negro League players. Um, I would talk to kids that I play with; they had no idea who these people are. Um, so I just thought it was important to, to really, I don't know, get their story out, maybe. Sure. Um, but just kind of spread awareness that there, there was like you know, black people, we had our own league back in the day, you know, and a lot of African American kids, they don't, they don't know that. So, okay. um, that was kind of one of those things that I wanted to do to help inspire, um, the African American youth, um, as far as, you know, baseball is related. And, um, I don't know. I don't know if it worked, but... <laughs> I think it does. I think it's yeah. awesome. You know, yeah. it's, it's part of history, too. Right, and, you know, exactly. For everyone to know where, where, where it started and where it came from, I think exactly. it's important. So I think yeah. it's really awesome to do Yeah, that. for sure. For sure. <clears throat> you want to try uh, the last one? You ready for it? Uh, let me, let me. <laughs> I'm not ready for it. I'm, I'm pure capsaicin. Pure capsaicin. It's right here. Let's see how this goes. Yikes. <laughs> Kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first. Sweet at first, but then it, it comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Tastes good. Damn it, man. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my lips are burning. Oh man. That's by far way hotter than the one before. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, that'll wake you up. I'm gonna have I'm some like bread. Up, okay. yeah. <laughs> so you touched on this earlier, how um, African Americans only can't account for eight percent of the rosters in major leagues. You obviously do a lot of work and uh, a lot of tutoring. Do you find it challenging um, trying to get kids involved with baseball, seeing how the popularity of football and basketball in the U.S.? Well, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like I said before, that that's. African Americans, we see a lot of African Americans that play football. Wow. <laughs> I can't speak right now, yo. Um, 
Um, <laughs> you see a lot of African Americans that play football. You see a lot of African Americans that play basketball, and you see their face. And I feel like that inspires the African American youth community to play those sports. And back when my dad was playing, the African American population was really high. And um, for some reason, like throughout the course of you know years, it just has been going down. I think that's just one of those things where we could do better as a sport in general. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like, you know, the NBA. She's laughing. I'm sorry. She's laughing. I know, I know you, got, you got some sweat. I know. <laughs> I'm sweating. My nose running. <laughs> um, but yeah, like in the NBA, you see, um, you know, guys in the tunnel coming up to the locker room, and you know, you got people that is taking pictures and videos, and you know, I feel like all the players are really on board for, you know, kind of setting that standard for themselves and giving back to the community also. Um, baseball is also an expensive sport mm. when it comes to like buying bats and gloves mm. and, you know, equipment. <clears throat> so that's why I like being able to give back equipment because I know a lot is is really hard for, you know, families to afford that stuff sometimes and then travel, playing travel ball and you know, trying to buy flights and all this stuff is just a lot. Whereas in basketball, you just pick up a basketball, go and find a court and a hoop. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, football, if you have one pair of pads and a helmet, you know, you'll feel like you're straight. Sure. Um, but with baseball, it's just a lot more stuff. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, I just want to do my part as far as that goes. And, and you know, I want to see the population in baseball increase because sure. I feel like there's a lot of talent that people just don't see mm-hmm. um, because kids just don't want to play baseball. It's not interesting. It's not fun to them. Um, they don't see people like me play the sport. So, yeah. you know, I just tried to really put an emphasis on putting myself out there a little bit more and, you know, just try to, you know, impact them as much as I can. So I think you have been. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I think so too. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you've done Jeez. it. You made your way through the, the spicy <laughs> gauntlet. Survived the last one. Yeah. All right. How do you That's, feel? I mean, I'm straight right now. <laughs> uh, I'm tearing up like right here. I, know, right? I accidentally touched my eyeball earlier. Really, like, oh, yeah. You yeah, messed up on that one. Yeah, I know, right? It's hot. Well, before we go, is there any last words you have to say? Anything you want to promote or tell the people about? And anything going on in your life? Uh, not really. I mean, we come back and play in June. Y'all come show love. I'm dying. Oh, man, I can't believe I touched my eyeball. Is that pretty brutal? Yeah. I'm going to five minutes touch my fucking eye. Yeah, I couldn't even concentrate. <clears throat> you were so concentrated. I I and then I was trying not to laugh at him. His forehead's dripping yeah. sweat. <laughs> 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 You all use that uh, powder oh, kind of taste in it? Hell no. Do that and that powder at the same time. Right? That'll wake you up. I'm gonna have a cogurt. <laughs>